Okay, well, with my limited resources, I'm gonna try to demonstrate my steak recipe. Today they had ribeyes on sale, and I thought, why not? So we're gonna cook fancy tonight for me, but this is a recipe I invented about six years ago. And I use it for um, mostly holidays. You can do this with turkey, chicken, any meat really, pork even. But I originally did it with a ribeye. And so I do it with rib roasts, mainly for the holidays. And I change it up a little bit more fancy for the holidays. And over the years, I have developed and find refined my, my recipe. So, take some garlic. Always mash up your garlic in a container that you can capture all of the oils. If you mash up garlic, say, on a butcher's block, it absorbs into the wood and you lose a lot of good flavor that the initial break of the garlic actually provides. So, this recipe requires three main ingredients. And that is balsamic vinegar which the store, I guess, quit carrying the stuff that I would explicitly use, which was aged red balsamic from Stargrand. And they, uh, that has a really big, nice tart and fruity flavor to it. Well, this stuff isn't, this was on sale, so I got this for three bucks, but it's, you know, it's in port held to a high standard, a traditional grade. Take your olive oil, put it in here. Now you want to let your steaks dry, air dry. Flip them over once in a while. And then uh, basil pesto some reason our dollar store had this on sale for a dollar. <laughs> you believe that? But the uh, I don't know, every brand's got their own way of doing basil pesto. Some stuff is really nutty. Other stuff is really spinachy. Tastes just like spinach. And then other stuff will be just well balanced. The real is alright. And so every brand that you do this with, different balsamics and different pestos all offer a different sort of flavor. My special <laughs> recipe that I found with certain uh, ingredients. That's my secret. But today we're doing it, experimenting with this. So, you know, you gotta get a pan. The pan itself will be lined at the bottom with olive oil and balsamic. You get like a 50-50 mixture with it. But the balsamic vinegar, this is something you can do for days, a few hours works all day to day. I'm gonna eat this later, so. I don't feel like letting it sit for two days. I do steaks for two days usually, when I do this recipe. And then up to a week for a rib roast. 
really pinchers. But the vinegar absorbs in, gives it just wonderful berry flavor. Mm. Always massage your meat. People buy those tenderizers. I think those are. Yeah. Massage it like a female. And yes, this is actually a very <laughs> good way to get the back room. If you do it right. Stupid. <laughs> Can't believe I didn't spill. So massage your meat. Gets all the fibers. Meat just softened. But pound it. You're just gonna get a meat tenderizer and just punch it, right? You don't want it too soft. You should just give lightly. Alright. So we're going to rub olive oil, this garlic olive oil, into the meat. The fibers to break it up, push it in to the fibers. Remember, this is fancy olive oil, so every drop matters. You don't waste any of it. It's pretty good. Now Take some of the garlic and try to get it in there too, in between the fibers. Somebody cut this at the store, so. Stuff like in between, it's like there, it's really good. Cause then the fat, when you cook it, you know that garlic really brings out a whole lot of lost flavors. Just make it a little bit more special. And this is my favorite stick recipe. Not just because I'm the one who invented it, but because you still get a really good steak flavor, meat flavor. And you're not just relying on fat. Always cook with your hands too. One of the secret I always learned, I learned from my grandmother, because you would notice that you could taste your grandmother's hands. So your hands absorb a lot, a lot of oils, nutrients, everything just from the world around you. And when you cook, you are absorbing and, food. and just somebody's been hand cooking their whole life, every day. My grandmother always has a certain flavor you can taste and it might sound weird but I tell you that's why everybody says their grandma cooks the best because you come from your grandma and you are technically <laughs> eating your grandmother <laughs> a little cannibalism right <laughs> you just get that in there Olive oil sort of floats. That was the fun part. I'll probably skip that out and put it in. 
fun part is taking this, and normally I brush this on, but I don't have a, uh, oh, this will work, I did buy some cheap brushes, so, you really think you need to buy food grade brushes, let's go to the store buy a package of dollar cheap brushes, especially these, which, Really cheap. Wash them, pull out as much hair as you can. Or as many bristles as you can. Clamp it down. And, uh, I don't brush, I don't massage the vinegar in. I do. All this stuff has a special technique to it for special reasons. You want the olive oil at the center because, well, fat and marbling at the center of the steak are what we pretend gives us flavor. So when you massage olive oil into the steak, it gets to the center of all the meat fibers. And you're you're upgrading from just basic beef fat. Now when I do the vinegar that I do is I brush it on. This needs to be clean too. And then I let the vinegar dry, and I'll do two coats like that on each side. So when you let it just naturally dry, you get a nice, strong berry flavor that breaks down the meat fibers. The acid does, but then you get this wonderful berry flavor. It's only really good. I'll tell you. Not that too. So the oil also then acts as a barrier because when this goes too deep, it can ruin the flavor of the meat. You just want this right at the edge. The olive oil does two jobs in that regard. You just let it cool on. Get on the fat too. And you let that sit. And you come back. But since <coughs> I can't really start and stop a video. Hmm. Just let it sit. Vinegar will naturally evaporate. Some soaks in. The olive oil basically makes a barrier though. It's hydrophobic in the fibers. And you don't get too much vinegar. You want just, just enough that you get this beautiful flavor. It's absolutely delicious. And yeah, you should do it around the outside, but you see what I want. I think it'll just bring it down. And then onto my lock. But if you use, if you shouldn't use foil because the acid actually eat away at them. Aluminum. You can pull it up.
<laughs> and it's raining. What? I'm gonna be back. I gotta roll, roll up my window. Doesn't take too long. Of course, anybody who actually watches this, so you guys can scroll through the video. Anyway, I'm gonna be all right for now. And on the other side. The choice is already pretty well tender. You don't really need an acid on it. The whole point is you know when it's done, when it has a certain color to it, all the fat has this color. You can't really wipe off. Looks really nice and dark. <laughs> We're going to do the last, the last step. The last step's really. Um, And I have had some bad mixtures of vinegar and uh, balsamic pesto paste or yeah, pesto not paste. Some of them do not go in. Like I said, two days for a steak is perfect. After after a week, if the meat ain't really fresh, it can start to spoil on the outside. But that also is like a wet aging. And if you do it just right and everything's bacterially safe, you know it's going to be clean. It is delicious. <laughs> after a week of doing a rib, rib roast, it is an art itself i wanted to try doing this and then dry age it and get into dry aging beef 
in my fridge, but you just lose too much. But hey, once a, once a year, I cook like that. You spend a hundred to two hundred dollars, and I go all out and do everything by hand and cook for a week straight, basically on one meal for Christmas. <laughs> I'll tell you, it comes out delicious. <laughs> I already tell it's gonna be good. It's really nice vinegar. It thickens extremely well. It leaves a bun. It's got berry musk or grape. What is it? Grape. Great must for an ingredient. I don't recall the other brand having Greek must. Whatever that is, I don't know. It's gonna be really good. Really, really good. Mmm, yummy. Good enough to lick, I tell you. When you do your garlic like that. Because when you just take the mashed parts, it's spicy. It burns. You lose a lot of... I don't know what it is. It's almost like vanilla, it tastes like. It completely changes the profile when you capture all the oil. Fucking uh, rain. It's crazy. It doesn't smell like rain, really. Normally you get a good fragrance for it. Mm -hmm. A little bit longer. Why won't you let me check my battery?